Welcome back, foolish mortals, to Body Creek Manor 2023. Why don't you come on inside? Have a look around if you dare. And if you survive, I'll be back a little bit later to tell you a bit more. Months can't pay their liquor tax. In the other half, they just pour straight out of their rib cages. But no matter. Looks like you're thirsty. So step on up to the bar if you dare. <laughs> It'll only cost you your soul to close your tab. <laughs>
All right, it looks like you survived Body Creek Manor. So let me tell you a little bit about what we did with the display this year, starting outside. So we do have the pumpkin twins here from Home Depot. They have uh, been in several of our displays. And last year we had this exact same wreath on our door. It's a pumpkin, it says boo and whatnot. I don't usually like to do uh, the same things year after year, and we like to change it up, but I am going to have my pumpkin army outside the windows here as you lead into the uh, house entrance. So I figured this is a nice transition into the main display and I wanted that to be more of a haunted house. So let's go on and take a look. All right, so we are greeted in the entryway by my butler. I bought him last year and we had him in my deadly dinner party scene. But really, I've always wanted him in here to greet people um, into the, the house. So you just have kind of a general spooky atmosphere. It's kind of, again, more of a transition into the main display. It allows me to use some of my raven motif um, that's sprinkled throughout the display as well. And if we take a look behind the door, so here we have our Nevermore poster. It introduces us to that raven theme that, again, is sprinkled throughout the house. We've got our Dedgar Allan Poe. Of course, he's our inspiration for a lot of the decor. Um, but let's go ahead and look more into the living room now. So my original inspiration for the living room, I was actually going to do a more Ghostbusters theme. I was still going to have it be a kind of a haunted living room, but we were going to bring in um, some of the characters from Ghostbusters. You can still see that inspiration in my Vigo the Carpathian poster behind us here. I did put him in one of my, my frames that I spray paint with the glow in the dark because, you know, I love using the black lights especially on the picture frames to emphasize their haunted nature. So originally the plan was I was going to have one of my Ghostbusters shooting uh, one of his plasma beams or whatever right into the painting um, while some of the other ghosts like Slimer and the Stay Puff Man look at us from the balconies. But I decided to tone it down just a little bit. I didn't want to always have the inflatables going throughout my display for the season. Um, and I wanted to keep it just a little bit more elegant, and I think that turned out really well with the fireplace. So rather than do something a bit over the top like I tend to do, I kept it pretty simple. I wanted to bring back my floating candlesticks that made it into my display last year as part of the vampires in the garage, if you remember that. Well, this year, um, again, they're floating over the fireplace. I love that look. It's pretty simple to do. I think it looks great, especially with the black lights on it, making it look pretty eerie as well. We also brought in the mirror that's got the uh, skeleton face coming out of it. I'm not sure if you saw that in the video, but I'm also mimicking that up on top of the stairway. So I'm not typically a big fan of these projection effects. In fact, this is the first time I've used this one, even though I've owned it for years. I originally wanted to try and project it over the fireplace, but it is just too bright, even in low light settings to really see this. So I think you can kind of see it up here in the corner where it's a little bit darker. Um, and I like that it goes in and out, just projecting, again, sort of that eerie, ghostly image of the, the skeleton face that goes in and out. If you were paying really close attention, you might have noticed a rocking chair, which made another appearance. She's spent a couple of years up here on the balcony, but this year she actually has a significant role in some of the theming, and we're gonna call her Granny, and you'll see why a little bit later. Also, if you were paying close attention, you might have noticed the storyline that's taking place here in the living room. So on the coffee table, we have the Ouija board. Now, we also have the bride, and she is trying to contact her late husband. So she has all these books on fortune telling and palmistry and the occult and whatnot. And she has brought out her Ouija board to try and contact the dead while well, something has gone wrong. And all of the dead are starting to make an appearance within the house. That's why we have all the portraits around us that are starting to come to life with the lenticulars. Um, but really, I did this theme so that I could bring back one of my favorite pieces, which is the unliving portraits. Every time we display the unliving portrait, it's a really good reaction. People gravitate toward them. They're such an interesting display and are kind of spooky, especially when this lady kind of jumps out at you. So there we go. <laughs> so. I built some frames around them. I've actually done this um, in one of my, I think one of my very first displays in the house that I did about 10 years ago. Um, so I haven't brought them back since because it is kind of a pain to set up, but it's so, so worth it. Um, 
So this was the inspiration for all the portraits that we see throughout the house on the side of the sofa and going up the stairs and down the hall. I added a lot. They're all lenticulars. The image is going to move and change as you look at it and move slightly. So it's all very creepy if you pay attention. If you watched our walkthrough last year, you will remember this guest bathroom was very hard for me to decorate. I did it actually at the very last minute, pulling pieces together. Well, this time I thought it through a little bit more. Always loved my headless horseman decor and I didn't really think I had enough stuff to piece around the room. But then I had this inspiration to have my headless horseman man sort of popping out of the doors here. So I think it looks fantastic. It's really spooky. And, you know, during my Halloween party, people often have to come in, use the bathroom. And I think this is really going to scare the kids. And if you close the door, you see our tarot card artwork with the Headless Horseman on it as well. I've used that in our uh, couple of different fortune teller themes. And we are going to also use that in the stairway going downstairs. So clearly a lot can happen in a year. Our fortune teller witch from the living room last year has now been relegated to the basement, but she's trying to make her way back up. That's kind of where I was going with this. We've got our old creepy witch. Again, our tarot card artwork behind her. And then I added some lighting effects with the spiders on the walls. And again, I had my lighting effects problems right at the last minute. I had two of these spider projection effects on either side, so it kind of filled the whole area with spiders. And one just sort of died at the last minute. That actually happened to me when I bought these spider uh, lights. The first year I used them, I bought four of them. I wanted to put them in a tent outside and have them shine on all four walls. Two of them died right as I was trying to set up for Halloween. So I'm very disappointed in these. I highly do not recommend them at all. Um, but at least the one was working today for you. So you can kind of imagine what it would look like with more spiders. Here in the back stairs, we have another transition area between the garage and the kitchen as people have to pass through to get to the pirate scene. And we have our scary werewolf. He's made an appearance in a lot of our outdoor haunts areas in the past, and he never fails to scare people. Remember Granny from upstairs? Well, guess who is coming to visit Granny? Little Red Riding Hood, as evidenced by the escape coming down the stairs and the scattering of her bones. So last year, we had a deadly dinner party happening in the kitchen and dining room. And if you remember looking out this window, we had our pirate captain because he has been attracted by all of the alcohol and the red rum particularly that made an appearance in the kitchen. This year, he's brought all of his friends. So Dean the Deathologist here was the inspiration for the deadly dinner party. He came from Home Depot last year and is just an amazing prop. He's pouring the alcohol. Um, obviously, he's a bartender, so now we are making this our bar scene that has attracted all of our pirates. But not only do we have Dean this year, but we have Marie the Meddling Maid. As you can see, Marie here does not appreciate the pirates running rampant over the scene. So she's taking matters into her own hands, literally turning this into another deadly dinner party. I do like some of the more subtle details in this display. You might have noticed the sinking ship here in the artwork in the background. And then, of course, my favorite piece, instead of my bowl of apples that usually sits here on the buffet, we have our bowl of skeleton fish. So the display in the kitchen, we actually, in the walkthrough, kind of see it backwards. It's really meant to be seen from the door here inward, which is where people from my party zone would actually be coming from outside into the kitchen to partake in the alcoholic beverages. So the first thing that they're going to see when they come through the door is my other little mini butler greeting them. Of course, he's got his... Uh, skeleton octopus there, but we have the sign that says, uh, beware ye who enter here. And, uh, you want to beware because the pirates are dangerous. As evidenced here by the wanted posters that surround their treasure chest. So who knows how they came upon all of this treasure, but obviously they've done something very bad, uh, to get that treasure. And that's why Dean and Marie are so eager to get rid of them. Back here behind me, we also have our pirate captain, who's keeping an eye on his treasure. And if you paid close attention to the treasure map on the wall, it's actually the Goonies treasure map, um, which is just kind of a fun little inside. As the party doors come into the kitchen, they're going to reach the drinks area, which is indicated by a red rum here, which actually makes sense with our pirate theme this year. Of course, it is uh, not the shiny as well, but 
Uh, I've gotten a lot of comments that Demon Deathologist is very reminiscent of The Shining too, so it all kind of comes together in the end. A couple of details here. We've got our interesting octopus candle holders. Um, we have Red Rum was off as murder, right? Backwards. We've got at some sort of murdered pirate back here on the back. And of course, we've got our bottles of poison. And then lastly, I thought it was kind of cute to have our skeleton mermaid sort of bathing in the kitchen sink. I hope you enjoyed your tour of Body Creek Manor 2023. If so, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed. If you want to see future videos, we have a lot of time still before Halloween. A lot more videos coming your way for DIYs, product reviews, store walkthroughs, and more. Uh, before we go, I did want to say a special thank you to all the patrons who help support the channel. If you're interested in joining our Fright Club, be sure to check out a link to my Patreon page in the description below. That's going to do it for today, so thanks for watching everyone. Till next time, take care, and happy haunting.